what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Hey, John Corkin here. I'm the host of this show, and this is a live episode that's going to be appearing on my podcast, which is Smart Business Revolution, and Dr. Jeremy Weiss's podcast, which is Inspired Insider. And we're going to be talking in this episode about why start a podcast in this busy world where we all have a million different things that we need to do. Isn't that just one more thing to add to our plate? Well, actually, we have a bit of a contrary opinion, having done it for a combined, what, 24, 25 years between the two of us pod, uh, podcasting in this new medium. And we have some pretty strong opinions of why it can actually save you time. And there are many different ways in which you can use that. So we're going to dive into how exactly a podcast can save you time. Of course, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25 Media, where we help B2B businesses get clients referrals and strategic partnerships with done for you podcasts and content marketing. And if you're listening to this and thinking like, should I start a podcast? Well, first, listen to why it will save you time, which we'll explain in a moment. But secondly, send us an email at support at Rise 25 Media or go to our website, rise25media.com. Lots of resources for you to check out there. All right. So, Jeremy, let's dive into this topic. Um, first of all, if someone's listening to this and they're thinking, you know what, I'm curious about starting a podcast. I listen to podcasts. I enjoy them. Uh, it seems like all of my my po- you know peers and and colleagues and contemporaries are starting podcasts. You see it all the time. You know, celebrities are starting podcasts, but I got too many things on my plate. I'm I'm way too busy. How could I possibly add that one more thing on top of it all? What's your response to that? Uh, I say just don't, don't start it because it's less <laughs> competition. It. It's less competition. No. Um, uh, yeah. If you're not feeling it, don't do it. But, um, you know, I know in our lives, John, we always look to deliver value first to people before asking for anything. And so I don't know how people do it. Like, how do you deliver value first in a relationship? Um, and we have found there is no better way to do that than to have a podcast. And so if you want to, one of the biggest things is you, if you want access to higher and higher caliber people is you, whatever you categorize as higher caliber people, they're busy. Okay. They have a lot of things pulling at them. Well, how do you deliver value to those people first? And there's a number of ways, one of which is to profile them on your platform, the people and companies you admire. So I don't know, Jana, how do people really get access to higher caliber people you know, giving with a podcast is a big one in our world. Yeah, sheer grit or uh, connections, right? But, you know, those two things don't know. How do you get connections? Yeah, exactly. So that's a big one. You know, uh, we always say the amount of time it will take you to get access to higher and higher caliber people without this, it just takes longer and it's going to cost you more, it's going to take more time. Yeah, I was just reading our friend Dory Clark's new book, The Long Game, and it was about how to create time in your schedule for long-term strategic thinking. And she said one of those ways is by saying no to many different things, as many things as you can as possible. But it was curious that one of the few things that she would say yes to was a podcast interview in, in most instances, you know, and, and that's the case. You know, she's, uh, you know, a busy keynote speaker, author, best-selling author, you know, a lot, a lot of demands on her time. And that's what I found is that, you know, if you want a way to connect with someone like that, high caliber person, person of influence, um, who has status, who has authority, especially in your field, the podcast is a great way to do it. So let's talk about um, the ways in which a podcast can save you time. One of the points that you make, Jeremy, is that you should already have people on your schedule already. So you're already spending time already with people, you know, maybe they're, you know, you could always go higher caliber, you can always get busier, you know, more successful, uh, more prominent individuals, but you should already have people on your calendar that you want to connect with, you want to deepen a relationship with. And, and the podcast is about leveraging those time slots further for creating content that is published on a podcast. Yeah, people will say, all right, Jeremy, so how much time do I need to carve out now that I have a podcast? You know, do I need to carve out like one hour, five hours, and, I, and just like what you said. Well, you should already be having your best referral partners, your relationships, your clients, your potential clients already on your schedule. 
So it's not like you have to carve out any more time. And if you don't, well, you should anyway. So you should be, should be having time for those relationships. Yeah. So that is and a big one. Another great point. You remember talking to a friend of ours, Justin, a couple of years ago, who was, he was going off to a conference and it was a day of travel on the front end, a day of travel on the back end and two or three days in the middle out of the office for about five days and was saying that, you know, I don't have time to start a podcast because I got all these things going on. And why was he going to the conference? Of course, he was going to meet, meet people, to get referrals, to get clients, uh, to build relationships. And, you know, so it, it's really about um, a, a better way of doing that and a better way to b get referrals because you can connect with people, you can deliver value with people um, using the podcast, it, often in lieu of other time consuming types of activities like traveling off to a networking event or a conference or something along those lines. Yeah, you can connect to people before and it's a great mechanism to deliver value after. So when you're connecting with people, you say, hey, you know, what are you going to say? Hey, John, um, we should chat sometime. All I'd love right. to tell and you that, about what that I never, do. That never yeah. happens. But listen, why don't we connect in a few weeks after the conference when things you know, we get, we catch up a little bit and I'll have you on my podcast. And, and the reason people will say, want to say yes, is because you're making it go a lot farther. When you have a podcast, it goes across whatever, 15 plus channels. It goes on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and they know that. So that one conversation that you have of them explaining what they do, you can actually publish it out and they can use it as marketing material. You can use it to, and we often use it to make introductions to people go, hey, you know, before I introduce you to, to John, here's the podcast I did with them and here's more information. And, you know, it just goes a lot farther. Yeah. You know, another one I say to people is that it's hard as a professional, as a, as a uh, business person to say, you know, hey, um, you know, client, uh, you know, I'm a little slow next month. Their company's a little slow. Uh, do you mind introducing me to some of your best clients so I could talk to them a little bit about what I do? I mean, of course, you, you're not going to do that. That's not going to fly at all. But it's much easier to say, hey, you know, I'm doing a series on my podcast. I would like to feature this type of individual. Um, do you know anyone who, who fits those type parameters? Because we'd love to feature them. You know, it's a, it's a much more of a give, but at the same time, you're getting high caliber referrals to people. Now, we're not saying that you should immediately turn around and pitch that person, sell that person. Absolutely not. You should start, should start by delivering value, but it does get you that access that is much more difficult to get at the times that you want it. Yeah. I mean, you just continue to think of ways to give in the process. You know, John, like what you said is you, it's a, the, the, your approach is in a giving fashion. Do you want to be in the podcast? Then after the podcast, well, who can I introduce you to? It's not selling them anything. It's not pitching them anything. It's just learning more about them so you could deliver even more value to them. You yeah. know? And they will be aware of what you do as a business. So if they know someone or, or they may be looking for that, well, then that will naturally come up. You don't really need to put it in their face all the time. Yeah. Now, uh, another one, another point that you often make is that the podcast should help you with your current big objectives that you've already set for your business that you're already focused on, whether yeah. it's hiring people, whether it's recruiting, whether it's uh, getting better at implementing SOPs within your business. So talk a little bit about that point. Yeah, that's a great one because people will say, they, even people who do podcasts, they get busy, right? And there was one um, client that we had uh, about a month ago and I was like, you're not producing as many episodes as normal. They're like, oh my God, Jeremy, like we are getting so much business, we're just focused on hiring right now. And I said, I paused for a second, go, great. Why aren't, where are you getting your, you know, the referrals for people to hire? Well, they mentioned that they get them from certain universities. And I mentioned, well, um, great. So your biggest initiative is hiring recruiting. So why don't you have some of the, the biggest pockets of your hire, you know, the referrals are coming from the hiring recruiting on your podcast. And they said, so now, they're focused, well, their biggest objective, it's not like, oh, we already fine with clients and referral partners. Now they go, whoa, when I shifted their mindset around, you could be using this for the, hire, the biggest initiative, which is hiring recruiting, they immediately got excited and they figured, great, now this serves the purpose of what our biggest need is right now. Yeah. So they started having on people who are referring them uh, potential candidates. 
let's go back. Uh, we were talking a moment ago, ago <coughs> excuse me, about um, attending uh, conferences um, and the ways in which doing a podcast can save you time when attending a conference. But even if you do attend a conference, whether you attend a conference or not, you know, you like to make the point about creating a series leading up to a conference, perhaps, um, or using the podcast to reach out to the speakers and exhibitors. You've had experiences, and I have as well, where you walk into a conference and immediately you know some of the biggest players there, the, the organizer of the conference, the, the members of the board, the keynote speakers, because you've already established a relationship with them using the podcast. So talk a little bit about that point as well. Yeah, whether you go or not, like you said, is a good point because you can, when you think of the needs, and again, it's not my needs or your needs, it's the other person's needs. When we think of the needs of a conference, they want to attract more attendees, they want more sponsors, and if they have sponsors or exhibitors, they want to help those people get more exposure, right? So when I think in terms of the other party, well, how can I help them accomplish their goal? You know, which means, okay, well, I can promote, um, you know, there's many times where you do this, John, too, is like someone's having a conference and we have some of the speakers, some of the exhibitors on, and we post it on social media to tell people this conference is going on. We're also building relationships with some of the top players in that industry, but ultimately we're serving the needs of that conference. So you can reach out to the speakers and exhibitors. And even if I never went to the conference, I still know, let's say a large majority of the speakers, the, the sponsors, the exhibitors, some of the organizers. And, but when you go to the conference, it's even more powerful because I don't know, you know, people would look at me in a room, John, as you know, I'm introvert. I'm not really introverted, but they think I'm kind of like observing from the side. So I'm not like very outwardly, uh, boisterous or anything like that. So it really helps me make individual connections. It makes the room smaller. So when I go in person, it could be a networking group. It could be, you know, just connecting with people one-on-one -on -one through the podcast. So when I show up to that, I know everyone individually. And so I feel like I can approach people where that's not my natural inclination is just to go up to people and say, hello, if I don't know them. I think so, a lot of people have experienced that where they feel a bit of introversion and they feel nervous in a, in a room full of people. And so that idea of connecting with people beforehand, knowing a few people in the room can make it feel smaller for them. Um, let's talk about uh, speeding up your sales cycle. That's another point that you've made frequently about how podcasts can help speed up a sales cycle. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, building trust is a big thing. And, you know, when you're talking to a prospective um, client, you know, building up trust and continuing that trust. And also it saves time because let's say, John, we have this conversation and one of our episodes you could check out is the five different types of episodes you should create if you do a podcast. And let's say we're on the phone with a client, a potential client, and we're saying we're giving them value. Like we're trying to give them as much value as possible in the little, in the little time we have to discuss it. And but when you have a podcast, you can, we can deliver that value and say, hey, John, we have this episode, which is, and by the way, if they're thinking of doing a podcast, they're going to find this very valuable, the five different types of episodes you should be creating if you have one, and we break it down. And we may spend five minutes discussing it, but it doesn't do justice to the full, you know, the full topic. So we will send that 20 or 30 minute episode to that person. So that speeds up the sales cycle to, um, without you having to be there necessarily, you can deploy the content that you've already created to that person. Okay. It also, when you, if you do have them on your show, it, it's a, another give, right? And so it's just building that trust, building that relationship, not asking for anything and just helping them as much as possible. So it's just that getting to know you and building trust they may go in and I know it's happened to you, John, they'll go, you know, John, I feel like I know you. I've just listened to five or 10 of your episodes. You've maybe talked to them once, or maybe it's the first time you're talking to them, but they've binge listened to five or 10 of your episodes and they come knowing your story and knowing. Certainly. You. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the way I describe it to people a lot of times is imagine it's Saturday night. It's whatever, 10, 10 30. You're about to hit the sack. Um, you get an email from someone from a great potential client 
They're excited to talk to you. They say, wait, when can we talk? I really want to know more about what you do. But you're you're busy. You're busy on Monday, Tuesday. You're fully booked. You can't talk until Tuesday evening. In the interim, you can share with them one of these resources that we're talking about here, which is not like pushing someone off your website. It's not like a marketing pamphlet or anything like that. It's a conversation. And they will, if they consume it in the in the meantime, before you talk, they will be that much further along. They will they will be that much warmer. And it didn't take any of your time, as you pointed out. Let's talk about content creation. So one of the big advantages of doing a podcast is it saves time with content creation because you're talking out your content. How many people do we know that are beating themselves up because they haven't done a blog post in six months? They know they need to do it. They know that the Google and SEO and the world relies on content creation these days. You need to do it for thought leadership. And yet they're beating themselves up because they haven't done it. But such a better way to do it is to talk out your content. So talk about that. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this. You're a writer. So it's not maybe, maybe it's more painful, but maybe I feel like it's not as painful for you. I could be wrong. Like I, if you asked me to write a blog post, I mean, you were a speechwriter at the White House, governor of California. You know, if you asked me to write a blog post in the, you know, over a decade I've been podcasting, I've been putting out two to three episodes, blog posts a week that go on 15 different channels. They go on the website, they go everywhere. I probably would have done one, maybe, maybe, but it's more engaging. It's, I find it easier. I'll hear what you have to say about it, but to talk and have, you know, a, a great conversation. And then we hand it to our team that does all of the writing and posting. And so it's an easy button. I could just upload. This is what we'll do after this. We will, in less than three minutes, send the file to our team. And it will magically appear. There'll be a nice blog post written. And good thing John you know, works with the writers. Because if it were me, we'd probably get nothing out the door. Because I was a biochemistry major. It's this but, audio file. That's all you get. Yeah, exactly. But it allows you to, that is authority, that is SEO, um, you know, two to three episodes or posts a week is SEO. I know that, um, and if you do video, it's on YouTube. I know a couple weeks after I've done an interview, people have Googled someone's first and last name that I've had on, and I'm like three search results on the first page of Google for their name. And so now there, I'm showing up in searches for someone else. So it just saves so much time because you just show up and talk and then the rest of it gets deployed as audio and video and a blog post and transcript. So yeah, I mean, uh, I, I want to hear what, what your thoughts are because I am not a writer, right? Yeah, I mean, to the point you made, it's, I describe it sometimes as a land grab. It's grabbing real estate where the real estate matters the most, you know, or it's almost like back when the Yellow Pages was a thing, it was like getting a free Yellow Pages ad in the section that you want to be in, because you know, by creating this content and putting it out there, you are, you know, grabbing a, a piece yeah. of that coveted real estate on the first page of search results that people fight tooth and nail to get there. Right. Um, the other example that I I give is, you know, I wrote for Forbes for a few years. And, you know, I didn't put out that many articles. Yeah, it had cachet and everything, but I put out like ten to twelve articles a year. That's 10 to 12 people that I was building and deepening a relationship yeah. with. It probably took over 100 hours. For half that amount of time, I'm you know, connecting with five times as many people. And it was more, it's more fun. It's more enjoyable. And so, yeah, even though I'm a writer, naturally, that's my background. You know, I realized that the impact, the number of hours that you put in to the number of relationships that you build, to the amount of content that you output in terms of word count, article count is just far greater when you talk out your content. Yeah. I mean, what's the easiest way to deploy your ideas and give to relationships? And it serves so many other purposes. Right. The other one I want to point out, so I don't know if there's anything on that piece, but it just saves time and content creation. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you have some yeah. of the busiest people in the world. If you look at some of them have a videographer, a video person following them around just to record it. And then the magic happens afterwards. So yeah, they do. Um, uh, two more points. Um, one is panel discussions. And then the last one is repurposing perhaps content that you created in another context, like a speech or a webinar or something like that. So panel discussions is one that we usually don't recommend that people 
embark on if they're just getting started. But, you know, you and I are doing one um, this Friday um, where it's going to be basically a panel discussion. So you can you can do it two different ways. You can do a panel where you and perhaps other clients come on your show and interview one person, or you can do a panel discussion where you're building a relationship with multiple guests who are all panelists on the panel. You're the moderator facilitator and you are guiding them through either way. It's high leverage. So talk about that point, Jeremy. Yeah. I mean, it takes some, um, you know, you want to make sure you run it right. So people aren't talking over each other. So, you know, it's always a work in progress. Uh, but yeah, panel discussions, when you have, and I've had people on like two or three people, I remember one person reached out and they said, Jeremy, I'm launching a new book. I want to come on the podcast. I've already had him on the podcast. Great person. I'm like, this would be great. I'd love to have you on. What, who are some of your friends who are also releasing books that we could have on as well? Because I've had you on, usually I don't have a ton of repeat people. So I'd like to get some, some fresh people on the podcast. and he brainstormed with me names. Um, and he's like, well, I have this friend and, and, you know, it was in the marketing arena. So we wanted something that was similar. He thought of two other people that were, um, I think one of them was, was releasing a book and one of them had written a book. So we had three people on in the marketing realm and he basically brainstormed the people and I didn't even know them. Um, so he's like, he reached out to him, he got them. We arranged it and it was a great session and they all had um, chemistry together because they knew each other. So it was kind of fun. I didn't, I only knew one of the three, um, and, but it's a great way to build relationships in this, um, in this arena. And like you said, John, most people don't think of it. Well, you could have, there's several we've done where we had another um, guest interviewer on. Okay. And we both, you know, I had one uh, in particular lately in the wine industry. And I don't have a lot of industry knowledge in that, but we have a, a client who does. So I said, hey, do you want to come on? And you could really be the brains behind the wine stuff. And I'll, I'll ask questions about the journey. And it was great for both of us. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then final point, uh, and by the way, we should do a whole nother episode on best strategies, best practices around doing a panel, moderating a panel discussion. But um, uh, last one is repurposing. So repurposing a speech that you gave, a webinar you did, a LinkedIn Live, a Facebook Live. Talk a little bit about that point. Yeah. I mean, listen, we spent, I don't know, John, uh, between the two of us, how many webinars have we done? Like over, over 400, over 500. Yeah. So you spend, we spent a lot of time constructing those webinars, thinking them through. And it's kind of a shame if you're just like, let not bring that into your podcast. Right. And so there's certain points that you've really thought through certain stories that you can tell. And a lot of times it's based around there's um, you have the webinar on that topic because you are the thought leader in that specific space. You may, uh, you know, ask, uh, answer questions that are really powerful that you want your audience to know. So you can take pieces of a webinar and, and release it. So repurpose what you've already done, a speech that you've given. Um, you know, it could be something that you touch on in, like you said, in a LinkedIn Live or Facebook Live. Like you just said, you bring up these topics of weight. The panel discussions, we, people ask us all the time, like, how should I do that? Well, now we just are brainstorming on the fly right now. Um, and we could take, a, we could pluck a topic that we can just touch on in one and bring it to another episode. So there's so much that could be done, but use, repurpose the stuff you've already done, the topics, not you don't like take it and you just play it on your podcast necessarily, but you can take pieces of it and actually record it and have individual pieces so that you can deploy uh, when necessary. Yeah, and I, I realized in the course of you answering that, that that's not even uh, focusing on repurposing once you've done the podcast, repurposing that and other ways. So putting it on different social channels, putting it on LinkedIn, creating interactive dynamic audios where you take a little snippet of something that the guest said or that you said and turning that into something that you put on social media that gets a high amount of engagement. Um, so the, there's those other benefits as well. Yeah. I mean, saving time in general to give to your network. Once you have that conversation, now you can put it on all the channels 
you can, like you said, you know, we've done it where we'll take like a snippet of it and we put it across all the social media channels all over again. So it's giving to them all over again and posting it on these social channels when you've already had the conversation and you yep. already even posted about that conversation. Now you're doing it a second time. So yep. You can just keep giving with the, the original content or the repurposed content. All right, wrapping things up, where can people go to learn more about all of these ideas and what we do? Yeah, I mean, they, you can go to Smart Biz Revolution, Amazing Guests. Um, you can go to Inspired Insider. Again, all this content is free, by the way, Amazing Guests. You can uh, go to more episodes of the Top Business Leaders Show and go to rise25.com to learn more about what we do. And we are just creating tons of free content to deliver value. Yeah, and connect on LinkedIn if you like as well uh, for either of us and happy to answer questions. We're passionate about this stuff. So always happy to answer people's questions if they're curious about it. All right, Jeremy, thanks so much. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 